Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome to my video for the October Spellbinders Club Kit Hop. I hope you'll stick around to see which club I'm going to use this month and what I'm going to create. Like I mentioned in the intro, today's video is part of a hop which is hosted by Lynn of LV Handcrafted here on YouTube. As you hop along today, you're going to see inspiring creations using some of the latest club kits from Spellbinders. Each month, they send me a few to play with. Over here on the left is the stitching die of the month. And this one is a fun holiday treat cutting plate where you can add your little toppers to the bobbles and some stitching. Over on the right is the large die of the month, and it is especially large this month. And this is called Christmas Boutique, which sounds exactly like it says. It's going to make a little Christmas storefront. And in the middle is what I'll be using in my video today, and that is the clear stamp and die of the month. As soon as I saw these adorable little penguins, especially this little pile here, I knew I needed to make a snowy scene on a mini slimline card. So I'll be using these for my focal points and using the coordinating dies to cut that out. Now I will have these club kits as well as all of the others linked in the description box below if you want to check those out. As I get into the process, I will tell you about other tools and products that I'll be using. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Here's a look at some of the other products I'll be using today. I'm gonna do some ink blending with the Salvage Patina Distressed Oxide. And I am using just a blending brush I keep around for that type of ink. I'm also going to be doing some splattering today and for that I'll be using Uncharted Mariner Distress Ink and Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. To help with the splattering I got out my pipette and some clean water and you'll see here in my container I keep that base on the bottom to keep it from tipping over. And I'm going to be doing a little masking when I blend so I got out my roll of masking paper. And for the blending, I do prefer to use Strathmore Bristol Smooth when I am using Distress Oxide inks. I pre-cut a piece to three and a quarter by six and a quarter, which is the size I like for my mini slim lines. I'm gonna get started by doing the ink blending and the splattering just so that piece has some time to dry. Now, before I start blending on this, I do want to create a little snowy hill. So I brought back in my stamp set, which I completely forgot to tell you was called Festive Penguins and my roll of masking paper. What I'm gonna do is just tear off a section and then with some nonstick scissors, I cut just a semicircle or a curved edge on one side. And that is how I'm gonna get my snowy hill. Now to make sure I place that correctly for masking, I am gonna bring in the stamp that I want to use. I held that pile of penguins up and the mask was a little bit too high so I did move that down before I started my ink blending. For this I'm going to start right at the edge of the mask and kind of blend out the color so it fades toward the top. I do end up though putting some extra right around where the rolling hill is. Now while I work on that I wanted to tell you more about the hop I'm participating in. I am just one of many creators who will be sharing creations today here on YouTube using the latest club kits. To see what everyone else has created, first of all, you can try to use the hashtag in the title. But if those don't work, I have a link to the next person in the hop at the very top of my description box below. Also down in that description box is a list of everybody's links. So if you get a little distracted on the way, you can just come back here and find the next video. I know it's gonna be a super inspiring hop, so I hope that you'll take some time to watch the other videos, see what they created, and leave them some love. Once I like the look of my ink blending, instead of removing the mask, I put this inside of a box I use for splattering. Also brought in my water, a clear block, 
the pipette and the first ink that I'm going to use to splatter, which is the Uncharted Mariner. I took the lid off this and I pressed some onto my clear acrylic block. You could do as much as you think you might need, and if you don't put enough down this first time, you can always add more. For my splattering, I like to use a fan brush, but you can definitely use what you prefer. Now to get that ink nice and juicy, I got some clean water in my pipette and put a drop onto the block. Then using the brush, I mixed the water into the ink and then I just started tapping it all around that paper for splatters. I did add a little bit more water to get it juicy and I just kept tapping until I thought I had a nice coverage. Then it was time to clean everything up. I did remember to pull that pipette before the water got too dirty and inside I still had clean water, but I just use a paper towel I keep around to dry off that brush and also to wipe off the acrylic block. Now for the bleed proof white, I probably should have put it onto the block with the back of my paintbrush or something else because I ended up having to dirty my water even more to clean the excess off. But it works because this is the last thing I'll be splattering. But this is pretty much the same. I added the white to the block, added some water, mixed it up with the brush, and then started splattering. I really like the effect this gives. I really thought it created a snowy background. I did set this to the side to dry. While that was drying, I worked on the focal point, so I brought back in my stamp set, and I just grabbed a scrap of white I had in my stash. I will be using VersaFine Claire Nocturne Ink and Clear Embossing Powder for my image. I thought that this would help make the penguin bodies look a little shiny. I set up my cardstock and stamp in the Mini Misty and inked it up, and then I remembered I forgot to prep my cardstock. So using my Tailored Expressions Anti-Static Powder Tool, I rubbed some of that on my cardstock. Now since I'm using clear embossing powder today, it's not quite as important, but I just like to be in the habit. Now because this is a new stamp, I did ink it up and stamp it a couple times, and there was one spot left that didn't have any ink. So I placed it back down, pressed it, and that's when I realized my cardstock had shifted. Ugh. But you know what? These accidents happen to all of us. So all I did to fix that was turn that cardstock around because it does have two sides. Then I inked it up and stamped it a couple more times, making sure each time that my cardstock was down in that corner and that it hadn't shifted. I poured my powder over the stamped image, catching it with this anti-static funnel tray, and then I brought in my heat tool to set the powder. I like to heat up the back of the cardstock first, and then when I know my heat tool is nice and hot, I bring it to the front to finish melting the powder. As always, I think this is still magic. I just love that shine. I took this piece off camera with the coordinating die to cut it out. By this time, my background had had time to dry, so I pulled off the mask and brought that piece in. Now you'll see it's a little too tall for my mini Misty, and that's okay. Eventually, I wanted to cut this down, so I decided to do that now. I wanted to make sure I had as much of the blue at the top as I could, so I cut a quarter inch off the bottom and an eighth of an inch off both sides. This left me with a piece that is three by six inches. Before I put my Misty away, I do need to stamp the sentiment. Because I have a pile of penguins, I went with the Piles of Warm Winter Wishes, and I will be stamping and heat embossing this with the same ink and powder. To make sure that I had good placement of my sentiment, I brought back in my die cut focal point and set that where I would eventually want it on the card. I ended up putting my sentiment a little to the left of center because the present on the right side of the penguin was down just a little bit lower and took up some of that room. I did check the alignment with the grid on the door of my Misty and it looked pretty good, so I inked it up and stamped it. Now because that Strathmore Bristol Smooth has a little bit of texture, I definitely stamped this a couple times, then I added my powder and heat set it. For my card base, I cut a piece of navy cardstock that was six and a half by six and a quarter, and I scored that along the six and a half inch side at three and a quarter. 
I use my bone folder to help get a nice crisp fold on that. And because it is a dark cardstock and it will be hard to read a personal message inside, I cut a scrap of white cardstock to two and three quarters by five and three quarters and place that flat down on the inside. I brought in the pieces from the front of the card. Off camera, I did add foam tape to the back of the penguins and I pulled the release paper and then thought, wait, I had probably better put down that ink blended piece first just because it's easier to do this before I have the bulk of the foam tape piece. So I place that center down to get a nice navy border and put my penguins in place. Now off camera, I did finish this with a little bling, some gems from Spellbinders, and here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope that you enjoyed today's process video. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that you're inspired to click on that subscribe button below. And if you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, thank you so much for stopping back by. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.